Welcome to a new In The Mail, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. For this video we have a very wide selection of items so stick around, we're gonna start with this jeweler's magnifying glass and I've had another one of these for years and it's been great for reading small numbers of chips but recently I found myself needing more than one because the um, home lab needs one and the office lab needs one so I got a second one. Here is an example of how I would use this to read some very small numbers. Of course I also have the uh, microscope uh, which could do the same job uh, but I usually keep it unplugged from power and covered to protect it from dust. I only uh, uncover it when I have a uh, bigger job to do. So for reading a chip number, it's just easier to reach for one of these and do it very quickly. Same as always, if you're interested in getting one, you will find links in the description below the video. Next, I got myself one of these super cheap FPGA development boards coming from China. It's the Saipid Tang Nano and this is only $10 shipped. And I've been wanting to experiment with some FPGA stuff for a long time and this board seemed like an inexpensive way to start out. It's got the USB Type-C input uh, with a USB to serial and a built-in JTAG interface. So that's pretty convenient. The FPGA part number is GW1N-1 and the series is called Little B and it's produced by Going. It has a built-in 64 megabit PSRAM memory and I will add a table on screen with the main specs of the FPGA chip so you can check it out. Additionally on board there should also be some RGB LEDs and there are also a few peripheral boards that you can purchase separately to interface to this FPGA board. And I'll probably do a separate video on the subject uh, later on once I get the chance to play with the board. Before we go on with the next items, let me mention the sponsor of this video. PCBWay.com is the official provider of printed circuit boards for the Vollog channel and they do a wonderful job. Whether it's a simple two-layer PCB or the very advanced high-density boards, assembly services, you name it. They've got it all on their website, so check out the link I've placed in the description below. My next item is an FTDI FT2232H based JTAG interface. But not only JTAG, because this chip is capable of other stuff like I2C, SPI and Parallel, but for me the main purpose would be to use it as a JTAG interface. Let me take a quick second to open this enclosure so we can take a better look. Oh, so they used a little bit of foam inside. I don't mind that for, for this cost. Now, depending on the um, configuration loaded onto the onboard EEPROM memory of this board, the tool might be recognized by some, by some OEM tools and you might be able to use it within the OEM development tools. Alternatively, this is well supported under OpenOCD, so you can also use it with open source development tools. Now, this kind of interface is pretty popular among FPGA developers, so I figured I'd get one because at some point I might be looking at some FPGAs like I mentioned a few minutes ago. And I'm not sure if this is some original design or if it's uh, somehow copied of uh, uh, other interfaces like the Digilent one, uh, but here are the uh, markings that you can find on this board. Next, this is a very interesting item, which is the result of decommissioned cryptocurrency mining hardware. And this is the eBaz 4205 board. And at its core, it has a Xilinx Zinc 7000 system on chip, which is basically an ARM Cortex-A9 processor glued to a 29 nanometer Artix 7 FPGA in the same package, hence the name system on chip. And you can get this for a grand total of 10, maybe 12 dollars shipped, which is crazy. This must be the cheapest development board you can get for the Xilinx Zinc. And yes, it comes a little dusty and rusty. It has some wear, but I'm not going to care about that if I want to build a DIY project uh, using a Xilinx FPGA. I'm going to be happy. I can get this for 10 dollars. I'm going to do a little cleaning myself on the board and then it would be uh, good to go. In fact, I've already cleaned mine. Uh, I'll see if I can find a picture uh, with its original state when I received it so you can get a sense of how dusty it was. 
the hardest part with this is of course getting documentation with these kinds of boards but uh, the community is already working on this for months and you can currently get schematic board files and example broad projects to get you up and running pretty quickly if you know your way around these chips and the Xilinx development environment. There is a, a telegram group which people discuss this board and there is also a github repository where all the important stuff is stored. A few months ago when I first ordered this board I managed to obtain and download with great difficulty this large pack of data containing lots of documentation and example projects for the chip and as you may know China is behind the firewall so it's pretty difficult to download stuff hosted on Chinese cloud services unless you have an account and you cannot create an account very easily. Nonetheless, everything you need is now available on GitHub and I will put some links in the description to these resources. Next up, I have a syringe of my preferred solar paste for hobby projects. It's from Mechanic Brand and the type is uh, XGZ40. This stuff is cheap, works decently enough with my setup, so I just order a syringe maybe like every three or four months, so I'll, I always have some fresh one available. The paste is leaded, it's a 6337 alloy and the flux does leave a bit of uh, residue on the board but the melting point is uh, 188 degrees celsius, it must be written here and this really helps with hobby projects, you don't need to heat up the board very uh, at very high temperatures to get it to reflow so this is pretty nice for hobby projects. Another item that I have bought pretty frequently, it's the uh, base US compact dual USB charger and there is nothing fancy about this, it's just standard 5 volt 2.1 amp output and each of the ports is capable of up to 2.1 amps output but only 2.1 amps total. So if you're using both you're only going to be getting 2.1 amps split it onto each of the two ports. So like I said it, th there's nothing fancy with this, this barely covers the needs of modern smartphones but for all of the other gadgets this is perfect. You can use it to power small wireless sensor nodes around your home, charge small gadgets like smartwatches or action cameras. Personally I'm pretty much always working with something that needs a USB 5 volts power source so these come in handy. I've also used them as travel chargers because they're so small and compact and they're also cheap and the quality is pretty good so check them out. Next up I have some fastening hardware, some screws, some standoffs, some nuts, washers and I think I've said it before I'm getting this stuff from AliExpress for a couple of reasons. First there is no McMaster car type shop here in Romania so I can't just order whatever screw and nut model and size I need for my projects. There are some shops here but they don't always offer this variety and they usually target big customers so they will not sell you 20 uh, pieces of 2.5 millimeter screws for example. So for me it's easier to just search for this on AliExpress and order it in the low quantity I need and for a low cost. Out of this batch I think the most uh, interesting are these 3 millimeter gold uh, plated uh, screws which will look very fancy on a matte black front panel or an enclosure so uh, I will just put a link to these in the description below. Next up I have a uh, digital toslink fiber and you might be familiar with this standard because it's used on a, a variety of equipment uh, like TVs, sound systems, DVDs etc and I got it for experimenting with some digital optical interfaces and I will be doing a video on the subject later on uh, but this kind of chip fiber link is made from plastic so it's not very efficient but uh, turns out it's just good enough for short distances like 5 meters and uh, this way they can keep the cost down which is what you want for the consumer market. Next I have some 14 by 10 millimeter cutting blades and these go on crimping tools or cable strippers. I needed them to replace the blade on my old RJ45 crimping tool and I don't have it with me right now so I can show it to you but I estimate it has done over 10,000 crimps and it's not a very high quality one but it's still going strong and it has some history so I'm kind of reluctant to let it go and get a new one so I just replaced the cutting blade because it wasn't uh, cutting as clean. I also got one of these uh, best uh, knife tools uh, with a set of uh, blades suited for electronics repair, uh, BGA rework, that kind of stuff. 
it was on offer i believe i was able to get it for about five dollars shipped and i'll see if the link uh, is still available you can see it has this double head construction so you can put stuff on both ends and you can keep two different tools at the same time installed on the handle I figured this is pretty good value for money because you always need some kind of tool to scrape something on a PCB when doing some rework and uh, it is recommended to not do it with your uh, good tweezers. It's best to have a uh, tool specific for that purpose. If you remember this round LCD breakout which I showed in Volog 349, you will surely recognize my next product which is just the TFT panel uh, without the uh, breakout board. I plan to experiment more with this display panel and maybe create something around it so I just needed to have the panel with no breakout board. I think these are slightly too expensive for what they're worth and uh, shipping costs are still very high but we'll see maybe they'll start coming down. And I also ordered some of these round screen protector foils and these are intended to be used on smartwatches but I figured I could use one of these to uh, protect the round LCD from scratches and it turns out it's pretty much the uh, perfect size it just goes a little bit outside of the bezel of the LCD so if you're interested in getting one of these uh, check out the links I'll place in the description below and the uh, last item in today's mailbag video is a uh, photography uh, foldable light box this is a cheap model it's made out of ABS plastic or so they claim it could also be PVC I don't know but it's pretty nice because it folds into this very small package and the size I went with is uh, 24 by 24 by 22 centimeters and this is mo pretty much what I need for taking pictures of the various uh, boards I sell on Tindy by the way if you want to support the channel check out the Tindy store linked on screen right now and uh, my main target here is to get higher quality pictures with even illumination all around and this comes with a built-in LED strip which you can power via USB but I think I'm gonna have to add some more lighting in order to get good pictures and with everything considered at a cost of uh, five dollars delivered I think this is very good value for money and it saves you the effort of doing it yourself with uh, cardboard oh and it also comes with two background sheets white and black Yes, it's, it's not the, the best uh, construction quality. I mean, it, it just uses some magnets here to keep these things around. So it might be a bit fiddly, uh, but you can quickly fold it. You can quickly unfold it and set it up and, and take some photos of uh, your product, for example. 